stirring it up on the camera. Yeah. All right, Mike, we're live. We are live. What's up, guys? I'm Mike with Stone Coat Countertops. We're live, and you're in the training portal at StoneCoatCountertops.com, where we teach you every tip, tool, trick, and technique to take your epoxy resin game. I'm spraying Monster Energy Drink as I speak. Guys, I'm going to get prepped here to do a clear coat. I'm going to show you how to build depth and durability within your projects so they last a lifetime. Stay tuned. Enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Hey guys, you are behind the scenes here in Grants Pass, Oregon, where it's pistol shooting hot today. What's the temperature in your area? I'm curious because we're about to do a clear coat and we have the modern technology of air conditioning. It is 78 degrees with a gentle breeze. <laughs> Mitch, what's up, brother? What's up, Mike? Guys, we just went live. You saw this piece made last night. Yes, I did. It was awesome. Uh, we made another piece a few minutes ago. Yep. Fractured white marble. Correct. Going in the portal. This is fractured sunstone. Yes. Okay. Good name. Good name. Uh, What's the portal you're talking about? The portal, you can find it right on the homepage. Training with the mountains. Click there. That's going to show you all these cool projects that are going into the Epoxy Academy color training series. Why are we doing a portal? We're doing a portal because we have over 400 videos on YouTube. And the reason we have that many is because there's literally unlimited techniques. What we're bringing you is the latest and greatest techniques that we work on to make pieces mimic mother nature where we do river tables we do stone techniques we do floors we do countertops we do tables we do shower walls and we teach you how to save 10 times your money 10 times your time and really boost the ability to make a side hustle or turn a business into something that starts out small and that you can grow in your own area so we really hope you enjoy this content we get asked, how do I do a clear coat? Because in all of our color videos, the stuff has to dry before we come back and do a clear coat. What I like about our platinum product that we've been doing our last couple of live videos about is it dries very fast. Uh, we did a video last night. Mitch, you came back in the shop a couple hours after we yes, finished I that. I did, and it was ready for a clear coat. The surface was it dry. Was, it was dry, could not leave a fingerprint, slightly tacky, but you're ready for a clear coat. Okay, now. excellent. Three hours later. So this is about 15 hours later. We could have done a clear coat at that point, yeah. but here we are. I'm going to teach you how to do a clear coat. If you didn't see the video on how we made fractured sunstone and you want to, it's going to be in the portal. Sure is. Under training. Chris, can you pull up our homepage so they could see how to go to that section of our website where they find all the free training um, at a low, low price. Yep. Right there. Scroll up. Scroll up. There's our website, StoneCoatCountertops.com. You scroll down. You click on training. How much is in training right now? Oh, the Epoxy Academy is in session. And boom, there's the fractured sunstone right there with the accompanying recipe. You click on that and boom, you will see the live video. Why did we go live? Let me explain. So we went live for a couple of reasons. Number one, we wanna show you the actual working time of Stone Coat Platinum. We wanna show you the advantages of as it starts to set up, the different techniques you can do later in the pour without waiting for it to set up. Also. Everything that we do is in layers. It's in a process. We wanted to see, see, uh, show you that from start to finish. We hope you enjoyed that. And in this clear coat video, we're going to show you exactly how easy that is. Number one is mechanical bond. This is a random orbital sander. Random orbital sander is my favorite because you leave um, no evidence of a mechanical sander as, as you would if it just was orbital. It's random. It, it, it's dual action. It moves this way and it rotates, so it hides your swirl marks. I also have a, Vel a Velcro backer. 
and that Velcro backer is how I'm gonna address my edges, okay? So this is 220 grit. I'm gonna sand, I'm gonna wipe the dust, and then I'm gonna do my platinum. Are there any health professionals in the audience? Because I just downed one of these giant monster energy drinks. Um, I stopped drinking these a while ago, mm -hmm. and I'm highly addicted to them. You're off the wagon. I'm pumped up, I'm caffeinated. You guys are watching this live, during work hours, I'm not even gonna judge you on that. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm gonna move my platinum. Mitch, if there's questions throughout the video, let's go, Answer, uh, ask me those. Gotcha. And uh, I don't have my respirator. I don't have my ear protection. Um, I got my safety glasses on because they're my pres prescription glasses. Um, but you should wear that stuff. But we're live, so here we go. My microphone fell down my shirt. Uh oh. The screen popped off of it. Oh, come on. There it is. My shirt's getting a little too tight. I got some Corona weight. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, question of the day Do you have Corona weight? <laughs> like, okay. Here's what we're about to do. So this is what I want to show you. Um, this is a piece that has a clear coat on it. So you can see it's got, it's, it's really flat. It's really pretty. We did an exotic pour on this. We, we had a different palette on this. We have a video on this. Uh, it's on, I don't, I don't remember what this is called. Go scour YouTube, you'll find it, it's awesome. Um, but Mitchell, Mitchell link it in the description for you of what this is, but this is a really, really cool piece. It's got a clear coat on it. Now let me show you the difference. When you don't have a clear coat, uh, Luke, can you see like, uh, so we sanded so you could see the divots. You see the, oh, the white and brass white kit, and brass. okay. You see that, you see those divots? You see like this divot right here and here? Can you see that on the camera? Stuff like that. So we got, we got some. In, there's another one right here, Luke. That might be easier for you to, for you to see. I'm not sure. Yep. Okay. So those divots, guys. Um, when you're gonna add metallics, you're gonna add dye, you're gonna add spray paint and additives. You're gonna get uh, imperfections in the in the top. That's okay. That's no problem. That was a color coat. I'm about to do a clear coat. You don't want to use a finished surface that has spray paint in it as a countertop. You want to protect that. That's what the clear coat does. It also allows me to work late into the pour and get ridges and bumps and divots and imperfections because I know I'm going to overcome those, those slight imperfections with an additional coat. So that's why we do it, not to sell more product, not to um, over overuse the amount that we actually need, but it, it allows me to license when I pour to go crazy with my technique. If I want to make a, 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 a rainforest green granite or something like that, it requires some late techniques. It requires some, some, some things that aren't kind of standard in working with, with coatings. So we push the limits knowing that we have that insurance policy of a clear coat. And that's what this video is about is how do I, you know, one of our biggest questions from a newbie is, hey, I, I got a divot. Uh, how do I fix it? Well, you do a clear coat and 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 you don't worry about it in the color coat, right Mitch? Mm -hmm. Correct. Cool. Any questions uh, from the audience that I can answer? Um, no, I've been answering them here by uh, typing, but let the other viewers know what grit sandpaper did you just sand with? Uh, 220 grit. Sweet. 220 grit. So 
why did I not sand with, with my random orbital on the edges? Well, all I need in this coat is a mechanical bond, okay? I'm scratching the surface to create and promote adhesion. Our Stone Coat Platinum is a 100% solids product. That means there's no solvents, um, there's no, there's no um, off-gassing of the product. But that also means uh, the solvents don't burn in and bite on the next layer. So you need to create a mechanical bond, meaning micro scratches. You need to scratch it up with sandpaper. If I do that on this coat with the random orbital sander on the edge, I risk burning through that edge because we're still thin. Excuse me, I'm burping because of the monster energy drink. <laughs> um, um, but on a clear coat, we have buildup. It builds the edges out so I could sand it true before I do my ultimate top coat. If you haven't seen the ultimate top coat, or if you're getting confused, don't worry. Uh, well, worry. If you're confused, worry. <laughs> right? I don't know. We'll teach you everything right here at Stone Coat Epoxy Academy, baby. Woo! Okay. Oh, see, check this out, Luke. There's a high point right here. A little mini mountain right there. So you want to get rid of those. Just sand that mini mountain down. Ah, oh, there we go. You don't want a high point. A low point is actually better than a high point because the high point, if it peeks through your next coating, it'll create a little surface tension and you'll pick that up. But if it's a low point, it fills it in like a mini swimming pool and it'll lay out like a sheet of glass. Yes. All right. How did we do this piece? Go check that video out. But we started over MDF. We used our undercoat and then we did the, clear, the, the color coat. And then after that, it's time for the clear. Okay, I got a little bit of a, got a little bit of bumpies here. And those bumpies are caused because this is still quite fresh. And, and I pushed really hard right here and got a little bit of gumminess. So I'm gonna take some uh, sandpaper and sand that off. Cause that sandpaper got a little bit gummy. There we go. Nice. Nice. And I'll, so I could even get in here where this is a low point and just sand that out a little bit. I just, you know, a little low point like this, like a little divot, you could sand it out, but you don't need to because it's so little, but it doesn't hurt. You know, look for any low point that you, what you want. Here, here's the, here's the term of the day. Degloss it. No gloss. Get rid of the gloss. That means you got that mechanical adhesion. Okay. Guys, where are you tuning in from? Let me know. Have you started an epoxy business? What is your purpose in watching these videos? How can we help uh, further your education in, in, in the world of epoxy? One thing my brother and I, Mitch, he's behind the keyboard answering your questions here. One thing that we are thankful for is our father taught us uh, the trades. He, he brought us... Uh, to work with him a lot and, and he taught us how to um, work with our hands, how to start your own business. He taught us um, through his example how hard work will pay off and, and he still works with us. He actually uh, uh, runs our shipping department yeah. and um, thanks dad for everything that you've done for Mitch and I but the point of that is is there's a lot of power in learning a trade um, and this is one trade that is, uh, it doesn't take years. You know, my dad, uh, he made leaded glass windows. Um, he actually did it for uh, very high-end homes, he, like Eddie Murphy's house. And when we were kids, my dad put all the windows, built them custom in, in our garage for Eddie Murphy's house. Um, and, and, and so those were like the caliber of houses that he worked on. And what he taught us was if you get really, really good at something, um, you're not going to have much competition, you know? And so what we hope with these videos is you're going to learn how to do these very high end elaborate looks or simple looks that sell, you know, you can't, you can't expect like the masses to want purple countertops. That doesn't, that's cool for art. That's cool for like 
Sacramento Kings colors, you know, if you're going to do a man cave with Sac Kings, but but you're not putting purple in in a bit like a cookie cutter house in a development. Right. You're going to do earth tones. You're going to do white. You're going to do blacks. You're going to you, you may do some Ubatuba Baltic brown uh, imitations. You're going to do things like that. So that's what this training is about: is to teach you how to how to repeat what you do how to do it professionally where the masses would be like, oh my gosh, I want that piece. So if picture going to a home show, okay, if you went to a home show, what's going to stop the scroll? Okay, what do I mean by that? When people are looking at their cell phone today, they have no attention span. It's very, very hard for me to trigger you to click on a video and watch it. I have to really convince you through a thumbnail, through some ad copy that, hey, I want to teach you something really cool. So I hope you're enjoying this content because we work really, really hard to, to do our best to give you massive value up front. We want to give you all the value that we can up front so that you, you learn what we're doing and that you, you support us by uh, hitting that subscribe button, commenting in the video, sharing it with your friends, and ultimately spending some money with our company. That's our goal. And, and in, in return, we're going to give you the most amount of resources we can possibly come up with so that you succeed and build a successful business or have a six if it's just one project man i've had people come out to my class mm -hmm. for because they had one project to do but but they got bid so high on their granite they're like it's worth flying out to oregon and take you know so if that's you hey right on but um these trainings we do a lot of content that's for the basic brand new people who have who have never even kind of heard of this but that's becoming less and less a lot of people know about epoxy uh, and, and and what what we found though is there's so much room in the in in the country for people to do this for a living like nobody in your area is doing this and if there is somebody doing it there's plenty of work <laughs> like we get uh, a lot of demands for somebody who can come do it because there's kind of two there's two customers there's one customer is I'm going to do everything myself. I want to DIY everything. I'm going to research DIY. How do I do my own projects? You got that person. And then you got the person who's like, I just want somebody to come, you know, fix my windows. Please come tile my floor. There's that person who, who doesn't want to take the time to do it themselves. And that's okay. Their, 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 their priorities or their, their, maybe they're too busy. Maybe you're an attorney who is, 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 is too busy doing something. That, there's that person. There's not a lot in between. Not much crossover. No, I mean, uh, you kind of either do it yourself or you don't. And that's project to project. Sure. You know, somebody who's willing to mow their lawn may not be willing to, you know, change out their toilet. So, so guys, uh, there's so much work. There's so much need for people to do this for a living. If you're considering doing something you're passionate about, and, and you know, the goal of these videos, these training is not to sell you. I'm not trying to sell you. This is, uh, I don't even know why I'm telling you this other than it's a legitimate opportunity. We, 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 we see people's lives change because they learn a trade. And so if, if you're considering learning a trade, this is, this is a good one. Okay. All right. Clear coat. How, how far are we into the video? We are 17 minutes in. Dang it. I do that every time. I swear I'm going to get started. And it's, 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 it's that same time, isn't it? Well, no, I did. I sanded. Yeah, you sanded, but you're mixing about the same time every live. Okay, I'm using much less material. I'm using three ounces per square foot here. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't need as much as I did. Uh, I don't need as much as I needed when I did. I, I'm trying to measure and talk, and I'm not good at two things. Um, what was I saying? I have a good start. Want to tell them about the platinum? Yeah. I'm using our stone coat countertop platinum. Platinum sets up fast. It does not yellow. And that's why I'm using it because this was designed for the professional. It's not a first time coating. You want to know how to apply these things. You want to know how to trowel, chop, torch. You want to know how to color and be prepped. You want to know how to move fast because the working time is much less than our original stone coat epoxy. However, you have some benefits, meaning you could turn over jobs very quickly. It's return to service. The, the customer can use that kitchen very quickly. Um, still, 100% solids. Um, 
uh, it's food safe. Okay, it's uh, extremely heat resistant. And with our one two punch of the platinum and the ultimate top coat, the durability is unparalleled. It, the stuff is extremely scratch resistant, hot pans right out of the oven, boiling water, fried an egg, you could set it on the surface and it, it withstands that abuse. Is that what you were looking for, Luke? Yeah, you nailed it, man. You just made me sell, dude. <laughs> but it is the platinum. That's, you know, we haven't done a ton of content on the platinum yet, but one of our goals this quarter was to uh, to really support people who want to turn this into a business or support people who want to go very in depth on the color training and, and how to get these wild techniques. Like show them up close on this piece. Show them what this, show them what this, what this surface looks like, man. And that is, that is cool. All right, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna um, mix this for two minutes using a drill, and then I'm gonna switch to my one eight by one eight square notch trowel because that's gonna apply the uh, product at the at the correct height to still level out, and then I'm gonna chop it with our two inch chop brush, and the reason I'm gonna use a black bristle on that is in case a bristle becomes loose, it's more easily seen. It's not a clear filament that kind of hides in the surface. Um, then I'm going to torch the surface to remove bubbles. Can we heat gun the surface to remove bubbles? Yes. Can we spray alcohol on the surface to remove bubbles? Yes. Can we use a blow dryer? Yes. All of which are inferior to a torch. A torch is the most efficient tool for the job for bubble removal. Do you concur? Yep. All right, Mitch. What's the word, brother? The word. No, like, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping to have you fill in some of the talk time while I mix. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, where are you watching from? So Catherine asked the side stripped a bit on her project. Can she stand and paste that over? And I was just typing in. Oh, you better let her know, Mike, because you're mixing. I'll yeah. Let her know about fogging on color and chopping on color before applying that clear coat. You, you know your edges. Um, the platinum retains the edges really, really well because it sets up fast. You, you lose next to nothing over the edges. If, if you want awesome edges, rock face edge, man, it is absolute. Like do a very subtle rock face edge if you don't want it, but you have forgiveness and imperfection. If you want a routered um, smooth edge, no problem, but you gotta babysit those edges more. You gotta come back and really uh, look at them. If, if, if color voids out or you got surface tension, Grab those drips and rub them on the edge. Now, let's say it's a void and it's down to the uh, to the undercoat. Yeah, fog a little spray paint in that area and then do a clear coat. That's how you get perfect edges. But every job that I do, um, in in like from indefinitely from here on out, mm -hmm. I'm doing rock face edge. I, I love it. It's super forgiving and it sets me apart from other countertops. Like yeah. it kind of puts a brand on my countertops. It, it hey, if you, if you want uh, something that looks like natural stone, this mm -hmm. is it. Plus I know you I'm not going to get I got so much durability in that mm -hmm. in that rock face, man. Yeah, and rock. And then you do that, you do that top coat, it's more of a natural finish. I got the top coat and and I could take screws and pennies and tools and tape measures and hammers and and it doesn't scratch this surface. So um, I really like that that natural look of the top coat versus just the clear. Okay, what I like about doing a clear coat, guys, is there's no colors involved. I I, I can get it done. I can torch it, and it's in the beginning stages of setting up. Okay, I'm not going I'm not going to have this become jelly because I got plenty of time. So I'm going to pour this right down the center. You ready, Luke? Let's do it. I'm going to pour this right down the center. Okay. And then I'm gonna work it out towards those edges, okay? The reason I pour it down the center is because if I pour it right to the edge, this is extremely, extremely self-leveling. It's gonna go right off the edge. So put it in the center and work it out towards those edges. Right? Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab my 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. And now I'm just gonna trowel this surface. And you can notice any imperfection in this is gonna to start to disappear because 
it's not like lacquer where you have to get a perfectly uniform sand before you um, before you do another coat where you could see through each layer into scratches if you did a poor job sanding. You could sand this pretty awful and hide it with, uh, with a clear coat. It's almost like magic, man. Right, Mitch? Total magic. If you guys wanna learn magic, magic, do you believe in magic? And I hope you do. You always have a clown looking at you from Stone Cold Countertops. I better not sing anymore. All right. Okay. Speaking of singing, in our last live video, we featured a song that was written for our business by Johnny Farrow himself. He's a famous artist. He wrote an original for our business because he's our good friend. And if you want an original written for your business, stay tuned because we're going to play the original Stone Coat Countertops Epoxy Your Brain songs. We, 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 we had such good feedback on that sound that if you stay tuned to the end of the video, you're going to be serenaded by Epoxy Your Brain. Hey, Mike, when... A I, I can see the comments right now being like, bro, just stick to epoxy. We don't care. Like, don't we didn't come here. Yeah, you, like, come on, man. Just stick with epoxy. I don't care. A viewer <laughs> is asking how late after he's pouring over laminate, he's taping off the back wall. How late after pouring should he peel that back tape? Oh. Well, first, on, on laminate, man, you got to caulk the back wall. Like, make it watertight. So use um, paintable caulking and seal between the laminate and the, and the sheetrock. Don't rely on tape for that. Tape the front edge and, and pull that. I pulled that on the last video 30 minutes after I poured. Does that answer it, Mitch, you think? Yeah, what about the back wall? Right, yeah, you, yeah you're good. Oh, like, like where, where it's back raised? Back. Yeah, back man, um, 30 minutes. Uh, yeah. Right as soon as you're done, Pull it off. We won't make any more mess on that one. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Don't let that tape cure in the back. Exactly. Sorry about that. I understand this question now. You, you handled it. Do okay. It things, man. All right, so chop brush, pull any loose bristles out. I'm going to grab my bucket here, and I'm going to prime that brush, okay? Because if I don't, I'm going to pull up excess material and then have a low pot spot. Okay, now I'm just going to chop this. So what is the top going to be, Mike? Two things, it removes any trowel lines that I just created with that trowel, and it's my last um, hedge against under mixing the material. It also breaks surface tension towards those edges. Maybe I didn't trowel it all the way to the edge. The uh, chop brush is gonna wet out those areas, and it's gonna promote the material flowing over. As soon as I'm done chopping this, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, torch it out. I'm using the uh, beginning working time where this is still very fluid. Um, so that it lays out like glass. If you have a waviness in your top with the platinum, it's because you're taking too long to get this step done. If it starts to gel and it doesn't lay out like glass, you, you, you spent too much time on one piece. That means don't mix up such a big batch, get used to the process, get faster at it, and as you get faster, you can mix more and do bigger pieces. But if you got a whole kitchen to do, break it up into individual sections. As soon as you're done with that section, mix another batch and tie it into each other and you'll have better results. But ultimately I have insurance because I'm gonna apply that top coat to this tomorrow and that allows me to sand any waviness right out and, uh, and just apply that top coat. If I get a, a piece of dust or a nib or a, a booger in this thing, it, it's gonna come out tomorrow when I sand it right before the top coat. That's, uh, that's, why, that's why I like that top coat is because I could production style make tons and tons of pieces I don't have to baby them in my shop or create some spray booth or plastic everything like, like Dexter. I get to, uh, I, I get to, I get to work, man. Dexter reference, awesome. Yeah, my wife doesn't like that show. I don't blame her. That show is crazy, but golly, I, I like it, man. I, we need Dexter. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh gosh, we're gonna get in trouble for that one. All right, guys. You are seriously live. There's no filter. This is unedited. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna just brush out these edges. So you can see it coming over the edge, kind of, kind of yucky. 
and I'm going to just break that surface tension with that brush and go long horizontal strokes. Okay, I'm going to see this trick right here, like there's a void at the corner and I scrape some off and then I brush it out. That little trick is, is you got, you got a reservoir in this brush. Like check this out right here. You got a lot of material that builds up there. If you got a surface tension there, scrape it and brush it. Hey Mike, a viewer is asking, what is the difference in this clear coat and the top coat? The difference is this is a high build. This is thick. The top coat goes on like extremely thin. Okay, it's only for scratch resistance um, and, and to make it a, a more natural sheen, not so glossy or plasticky looking. And so that's the difference is this overcomes the dips, divots, imperfections in the color coat. It's really a three part system. Well, actually four part, you got undercoat, you got color coat, you got clear coat and you got top coat and then you got stone coat. I'm torching out the bubbles. Very, very easy to do. I don't like introducing a solvent at this point. I like using the torch. Look at how that's laying out, Mitch. Smooth as glass. So fast. to do deep pours versus, or do you just layer up the platinum? No, we have a specific epoxy. I'll show you, Floyd. I'm gonna show them our sample. We, we, actually, uh, we actually have a really cool image for you to see with a very deep pour and we'll show them if they stay tuned. Cool. Okay, I also don't let, like if he's working with wood, let me show him what we did um, on that. Let me torch this out yeah. and then I'll, I'll get to that. You know what, um, because this is a short video, we're almost done. Yeah. You know, all your work here, guys, is is done. Like the clear coat is so easy. Trowel, chop, and torch. You know that like, mm -hmm. trowel, chop, and torch. Trowel, chop, and torch. What, what is the, what is that too? I don't know. Trowel, chop, and torch. But I know that's a commercial that I hear all the time. But now it's trowel, chop, and torch. Trowel, chop, and torch. For the for the perfect clear coat. You can work for Johnny now. I could be a backup singer for Johnny. Yes. Hey, Chris, you got epoxy your brain queued up. Can you play that while I'm going here? Uh, yeah, let me bring it in. Okay, bring it, will I hear it? Uh, no. Okay, you play, you guys enjoy while I torch this out. Epoxy your brain by Johnny Farrow. Made for stone coat countertops. Tell me when we're going, Chris. Do it, baby. Tell me when it's over. Nice, man. Johnny Farrow, you are the man. You know, I'll tell you what, the YouTube community is so cool. I'm about to show you some cool stuff, but I got to tell you, um, Johnny Farrow, Marcy, mixed media girl, she uses our, our resin. She's an artist. She's world renowned. She's actually just got her books published in, um, you know, some of the major big boxes for art supply. She uh, teaches every day how to do different pours and paintings. Uh, artists till death, man, uh, Erica and Jeff, artists till death, they, they use our stuff every day as art. So epoxy as a medium is unlimited in what you can do with it. My specialty is teaching construction folks, teaching do-it-yourselfers how to save thousands on their do-it-yourself projects such as countertops, showers, floors, 
tabletop refinishing, um, things that mimic stone. When you want to when you want to learn more about art and, and the different ways to use this in art, go check out Artist Till Death. Check out Mixed Media Girl. If you want to learn more about, uh, yes, Christina Welch. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, another guy, Paul Paul Ricaldi from Paul's Toolbox. This guy teaches um, common sense DIY tips and tricks that will change the way that you think about remodeling because he's done it his whole life. Um, you could tell how much he loves resin and he wished he could do more videos on it, but I've already got the, the, that content covered, so he's mad at me. But you should still go check out Paul, man. That guy loves our product. We've become fast friends. Um, Brian Gary, he's the American builder. He's been on, um, on, on TV. He's got five Emmys. He does giant hotel projects. He's on the board for Marriott. Um, they choose what products to go in the hotel and he uses stone coat countertops, okay? The durability is unparalleled. Let me show you what I mean. There was a, there was a question about the, uh, about the deep pour. The deep pour, right. Luke, you gotta show this, man. Like, uh, where is that sample I just poured? Oh, here it is. So we went very deep in this bucket, okay, with our supercast. Our supercast is designed to not exotherm. That means not to, not to, to, to turn yellow when you pour it really, really deep, okay? Check, check this out. Look at that. That is super, super clear, super deep. It's got some scratches that it transferred from the bottom of the bucket. That's what you're seeing in there. But this stuff, that stuff is awesome. Yes, you can pour it very deep, okay? Um, this is a cutoff from a table that we did. Uh, you can go uh, two and a half, three inches deep. Um, that was you, that river? Yes, this is a river table. river table. If you haven't seen our LED river table video, this is a piece we cut off of it because I made it too big, kind of on purpose. I didn't know how big it was going to end up, so I made some excess. But then we tested um, our ultimate top coat on that table. And I like the, the natural sheen that it gives it. It's really, really cool. It's really, really pretty. And, and, and then you, you don't see any scratches. You, you get crazy durability with that, with that top coat. So there's our, uh, yes, it works on wood. Yes, it, yes, we have a deep pour. Um, yes, we have the best non-yellowing coating on planet Earth made right here. We are happy to serve you with any of the, the advice that you need. Um, our customer service, we scaled it, guys. We actually asked for help from our community. We we went into the insiders group found on Facebook, the Stone Coat Countertop Insiders Group, where we work together as a community to push the resin your brain industry to the next level of the future. And we ask these people all the time as a focus group, um, kind of where, where to go and, and what they need and how can we help them. And because we do these jobs on a very regular basis and, and we have our pulse on, on how this is done because I'm a contractor, because I have, uh, I've been in the trades with my dad my whole life. We've remodeled houses from the ground up. We've built houses from the ground up. We're right now remodeling a house. We just built a house, uh, remodeled a house for my mom and dad. We're, we're showing how we used all these products in that house. But the fact of the matter is, is, is if you want to know how to do this in real world application, you found the right place, the Epoxy Academy right here, this training is, is what we've designed it for. Right. Uh, I'm, go I'm going on a lot of tangents. We're unscripted. It's going good. If, if there's a script, we would be awful. Right. Uh, Rhonda Draculis, have you heard of Rhonda Draculis? She also teaches how to use our products. You can go check her, her and Kenny out. They're fantastic. Uh, the community that, we, that, we're, that we're seeing, that we're building, we, we love seeing what people create and, and we learn from that and we up-level and we up-level each other and we lift each other. Um, as the tide rises, all boats float. And so that's what we believe in is, is really empowering people with free information. We cross our fingers and we hope that you subscribe. We hope that you give us a chance. We hope that you try our products. So do us a favor. We're in a race to a million subscribers. This is the third video that we've published this week. Yep. Um, and the reason we're doing that is to try to, to win that race. We, we want to be the first epoxy channel to a million subscribers. Yep. Can you help us get there? Can you share this? Can you, can you help, help us get there? If you, uh, if you have any suggestions on that, we're, we're wide open. But please help us get there. Um, let's do some Q and A cause this was a short video and, and, and let's, uh, 
I mean, th- 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 this is how we teach, honestly. Like, um, we hope that this comes across as a live teaching session because that's what it's about. Uh, we, we, we only had the purpose of, um, you know, teaching you a clear code in this video. And we're trying to segment, like I, I could have done this in the last video, but we want to separate them so that you can catalog that the actual purpose of each video. So you'll see our thumbnail. It'll be a color. That's what you're going to learn about. And in, in this one, it'll be a clear. So um, now is the time to ask your questions uh, all you want. We're, we're, we're here to answer them. So let's go for it, Mitch. What is the shelf life of the platinum? over a year um it's long if you open the platinum here's what happens with the platinum when you introduce air to the platinum um the air will affect the platinum more than our other products and you could get um like a film that starts to create in in the because the air will will start to create a film in that and then that film can grow and so if you open them and you get like a chunk in it um, that's because there's there's too much air in the bottle. You can still use what's liquid, but if you're if you're a pro, this isn't sitting on the shelf any mm-hmm. length of time. Um, so, yeah, it lasts a long time if it's unopened. If if you open it up, you use it as soon as you can. You know. Yep. Uh, what about a curing time for the platinum? Um, it depends on your environmental conditions, but it's so fast. Um, you know. I hate over embellishing. You know, I'm seeing a lot of that online where, um, you know, it, it, it's like it starts out. Oh, well, this is this is ready to use and in 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 a you know fully it's fully cured in 30 days. Well, the reason we tell people that is because you know resin, all resin is going to harden and harden and harden more as time goes. Well, the danger with that is if resin becomes too brittle and there's any sort of movement in the substrate. That's why resin used to not be a good product over wood is it became too brittle. And as that wood expands and contracts, it fractures. And so our formulas are designed to to go over laminate that will flex. You put a little kid on the overhang of laminate where he eats his cereal, where there's an overhang that's unsupported, and that overhang will have some flex to it. Um, the resin would be fine in the beginning, but as it cures harder, it's going to fracture. So we've formulated it to have memory, meaning you set heavy objects on it, you might get an indentation and you lift that heavy object up and in normal temperature, it's going to have memory and come right back flat. Um, if you want to expedite that, apply a little heat from a, a blow dryer and you'll watch it grow right back. If you use a formula that, that claims um, it's going to dry super fast, but it doesn't have that flexural strength or it can't move with any kind of expansion contraction, it won't happen right away. But as it hardens and hardens, hardens, you know, yeah, you were able to use it right away, but it's going to, it's going to fracture over time. So, um, we've been installing these for, for many years and, and we adjusted the formula long before it came to market. And so you won't have that problem. It, it, it's, it's tried, tested and true. I love, I love these formulas and, what I love about the platinum is you do have that return to service. Like we almost got into like you watch it go 30 days. Well, mine will be ready in a week. Mine will be ready in five days. Now we're down like two days on people. Do hey, use it in two days. Well, tr- test it, man. Like try it out, see what you think. But I don't want to over embellish this thing. I don't want to get into that battle. But I got to tell you, Kenny from RK3 was out here helping me finish a project, and we were under the gun on time. And we, we poured a piece, we added the top coat, we installed it um, within 24 hours and, and, and kept doing construction on site. And anybody in construction knows, as soon as you install a countertop, you got plumbing that comes in and they're grabbing the counters. You got electricians that are adjusting lights and things and standing all over your counters. You got tape measures, you got hammers, you got everything set on that counter. As soon as there's a finished work service on a job site, it is littered with tools and, and, and things that they're, they're wrapping up the construction. So uh, it withstood all of that this stuff. I mean, we got to go back it's now been in use for what do you think six weeks longer maybe even, but yeah okay so we need we'll go back what what i'm gonna do is is i actually showed my mom this sample i says mom what do you what do you like better do you like the glossy or do you like the natural she says i like the natural so pretty (laughs) and so we're gonna go back and and do um, the ultimate top coat on her her river table there because you still see the LED light come through it and stuff like that. Like 
like check this out it's still it's still translucent it's still pretty but it it hides any of those scratches really really well so we'll we'll give you an update and we'll show you how good those things look after six weeks and they went into service within 24 hours yeah. so if i'm if i'm gonna if i'm gonna do this for my clients i'm probably gonna tell them two days three days be safe give it a little time to set up and cure but this stuff it dries man we, we did a dentist office in under two days yep. from start to finish and they started using that dentist it, we, we ended on friday mm -hmm. monday they opened yeah so um and i went back for that interview great shape awesome looking job you know and 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 and, and don't don't go into business with products that you don't know how to use. Really learn them. Really test and try. Let me give you an example. Go to a Goodwill. Go to Craigslist. Buy a table. Buy an end table. Buy a small, cheap project. Resurface it. Use it in your house. Give it to your friend. Sell it on, you know, Facebook uh, um, marketplace. marketplace. You know, go go get your money back for the materials you put into it to learn and 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 become like don't don't become an epoxy expert overnight and then um, go apply this in the Taj Mahal or or in Vegas and you know in the most commercial environment get your hands dirty understand that, that like go through the training practice Mitch you're going to put the recipes eventually we're going to put kits designed to use yeah. so they can try these techniques right one click ordering right now we have the recipe listed we have the training video but there's more coming to that uh, training. And, and and they could go add those to the cart yeah. to, to learn yeah. or adjust the color. Like, let's say you don't like sunstone, but you want this to be um, fractured blue moon. Then don't have uh, orange, have, you know, some blue, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. How do we do? Okay, how do I do a big kitchen countertop if I'm doing it alone with no help? That's a good question. Uh, go watch my platinum video. Yep. I did it by myself with my 12 year old son yep. and my 12 year old son was filming. <laughs> so, yep, absolutely. Uh, our most fast setting product by myself. Luke, you filmed part of that. Yes, I did. Uh, was it by myself? Yes, it was. Yeah, I, I did that on purpose. Mitch and I, we could dominate any project together. M Mitch and I can work together for 12 hours and not say a word yeah. to each other and, and know exactly what the other one is Meet is right needing. So, um, yeah, that's that's an unfair advantage. If you went to battle with us on a job, we would win. <laughs> but by myself, I did that on purpose so that I know this is absolute capable of doing it by yourself. If, if you're going over old existing countertops, mm -hmm. there's a huge niche market in that of maybe you don't have a shop maybe you're not going to build these out of plywood or mdf and and, and you're going to go over existing countertops you can absolutely do that by yourself you could build these by yourself too yeah i uh, got another good question here how long do you have to wait after your flood coat cures to apply the top coat the ultimate top coat tomorrow easy i want to sand i want to be able to sand this so i'm going to wait till tomorrow if i have a if I have a hair or a nib, I mean, this is laying out like glass, I man. Know, I've seen the and you only torch it, what, twice? A couple times, yeah. yeah man, now I mean. another question. How many times do you torch a flood coat? This is thin, you know, so it comes out fast. There's not one, look at the air. There ain't no air in there, man. No. This is, this is extremely glassed out. Like, okay, here's another thing. Let me tell you about, I'm frustrated. So part of my, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in, in going negative in life. I hate that. I hate going negative. I hate, I don't talk trash about other companies. I, I, I love the fact that, you know, when we started doing epoxy over countertops and giving the material information away for free on YouTube, it took us a long time to convince people that epoxy was actually a viable option over countertops. People um, were very skeptical. Ske ske monster. Skeptic skeptical. 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 People were skeptical, and 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 then that that was year one. Year two, we had to convince people to stop putting it on everything. We're like, it, it's not good for a bathtub, man. Like, like <laughs> no. I, how how are you gonna do a bathtub? when in fact now I'm working on a bathtub video. 
but it's not your normal run-of-the-mill bathtub. <laughs> right, right. So, so the point is, is, is uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I lost track because I couldn't say skeptical. You said it. Woo okay. Uh, anyhow, um, I believe in underselling and overproducing, and so that's what we hope that you see in these. Oh, here's where it was: is, is, is. People will tell you that over wood, that 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 you only need one coat. It's self like ours is so self leveling. You only need one coat. And I'm going, you're crazy. You can't do one coat. That wood has to be sealed. Wood is porous. And, and if you do a big old thick coat when you first start, it's, it's gonna, uh, let all that air come out. And because it's a thick coat, the bubbles will just become big old bubbles. You'll torch it out and then more bubbles. It's like an, it's like a faucet releasing air and it just keeps coming and coming and coming. So just because somebody advertises, you only need one coat with our product. No, man, you get like, watch our videos. I swear I will tell you the truth on how to apply this stuff. And whether you're using our epoxy or another company's, that, that information probably crosses over. And, and, and the only pro, like one thing that we found too was, we don't have solvents in our product because it is food safe. And people who um, see our videos see that we torch the bubbles out like we did. There are some products out there that have solvents that when you torch, the whole doggone thing lights on fire. So be careful of that. Know what you're using. And so, so yes, the, the information translates. We hope that you support our company. You can go on Amazon and find very ex inexpensive products. We actually have one on there. It's called Craft Coat. And Craft Coat is, is, is equal or greater than the comparably priced products that are found on Amazon. It's Stone Coat Craft Coat, but it doesn't have the same UV resistance, the same scratch resistance, the same working time. It's not as user friendly, but it's good for small samples and getting your, your hands dirty at a low, uh, a low entry level price using products. If you're, if you're thinking about platinum, it's not cheap. This is our most expensive product and it's the most expensive because it costs us the most to formulate. Um, Polytech who, who owns stone coat countertops actually has 40,000 or more formulations and in our in our philosophy as a company we are the ones that they they want to have the most advanced products so so we're we're not dealing with a private label here guys this is this is formulated in house this is what we create so please uh, test what you think is the best and, and, and the best reviews we ever get is a, a, a professional who's been using these products for years go, man, I can't believe the difference. So, I don't know why I said all that. that that's selling again. I sold again. Good. Good. I sold again. But but if you're going to do this for a living, you got to know that information. Yep. Let's go. Next. Any, any more? Mm, I've been handling a bunch of them while you've been going off there. I have a question. Yeah. Could we get a little recap of the clear coat? Yeah, let's do a recap. So, sand, 220 grit. You wanna, you wanna degloss the entire surface. You wanna sand the edges by hand so you don't burn through that color. You wanna wipe the dust. I use a, 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 a rag. You can add a little bit of, uh, de, uh, I'm sorry, you could add a little bit of 91% uh, alcohol to that to wipe it even easier, but I didn't do that. And I still had a glassed out surface. Any dust left in there, it didn't hurt it, okay? I cleaned enough of it off with a rag. After that, I mixed the material at a two to one ratio, starting with the resin, then I went to the hardener. And I mixed it for two minutes using a drill. I didn't scrape the bottom of the bucket, I lifted it off, I went full speed, and then I slowed it down and scraped the bottom and sides. I poured that in the center of my project. After that, I troweled it to the edges using a 1 8 inch square notch trowel. After that, I chopped it with my chop brush to remove trowel lines, to saturate the entire piece, to ensure that everything was mixed, and then I torched it. Before I torched it, I used the brush and I brushed out the edges in long horizontal strokes. Now that this is starting to set up, I could come through and I could scrape the drips with a popsicle stick. I could babysit this for the next 45 minutes or so and get those drips off. Or if I'm in my shop, I could let it dry. I could come back and sand those drips tomorrow. Um, 
that's the recap. Tomorrow I'll do the ultimate top coat. If you guys haven't subscribed, um, we require a certain level of subscriptions before we'll make another video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do it! No. <laughs> uh, any other questions come to mind, Mitch? We good? Yeah, no, we're good. I just want to show people one more time how to share this video if they wouldn't mind. If watching on a PC, that little share button, click it. Share to your Facebook page. Help us grow, guys. Yeah, we, we would so appreciate that. Uh, um, check it out. Do one more flyover of this thing. I do not see a wave, a dip. Oh, here we go, Luke. I see something. Let me show how to get this out. Let me find a popsicle stick. It looks like glass on my end. I see a little hair in it. I'm going to do a, do a little trick here. Man, did I use all my popsicle sticks? Ah, here we go, I'll use this. Oh no, this is too thick. I'll use a used popsicle stick from yesterday. So I'll break that in half. I got like a little tweezers right here and I got a little hair right here. Okay, all right, it was like, see that? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Eyelash or something? Yeah, but now look, look at the top. See how it's kinda, kinda uh, distorted? Done, perfect. Well, it will be perfect. It slowly glows back to you. Ray B has a question on seaming uh, completed counters together on site. Oh, good question. So let's say you're doing these off site and the job is too large to, uh, to bring to the job in one piece and you gotta seam it together. So we typically will do that at the center of a cooktop, at the center of a sink, um, maybe um, in the center of a big bat wing, a layout, but we'll pour the piece, we'll get it done as one piece. We'll build the whole job as one piece. We'll set it up on sawhorses and things like that. We'll pour the whole thing so that all these veins line up. And then what we'll do is we'll come through and cut the seam in. Um, if we got to se seam the MDF or plywood together, we'll use biscuits and quick coat. Um, we will have video. We have lots of videos on how to seam. Go check those out and, and we'll put those in the training. Cool. Okay. Uh, but we seam them together. We pour it. We cut the seam in after the, it's poured, but before the ultimate top coat. We deliver it. We install it, we beat it up, we don't care because we're going to sand it and apply the top coat. So when we bring it together on site, we use biscuits, quick coat, it dries fast, quick coat. and then we, you could tint that quick coat. So let's say it's white, tint it white. If it's black, you tint it black, uh, just like you would bring a seam together with granite. Mm -hmm. You, 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 you pre-biscuit that because the biscuits are going to align it vertically again. Okay, so you glue it together, it lines it vertically, you'll have a tiny bit of lippage, use your random orbital, sand that out, it's been tinted so that tight seam will almost disappear, yep. and then you apply your top coat and it's seamless, oh. man. That's how you do it. If you apply the top coat first, here's the problem with that, like our top coat, the ultimate top coat, it's, it's, uh, it's got additives in it that make it extremely easy to clean. Well, those same additives, uh, like, Picture Teflon, okay? You think if you apply another coat of Teflon on top of Teflon, it wants to stick? It doesn't want to stick. You've got to mechanically bond that. So if you apply your top coat and then deliver the job and then apply just top coat where the seam is, well, first you got to hide and feather that out. But second, that first layer is not going to want to bond really good to that second layer. So you almost got to sand it really, really rough. So why not just wait? You could do every piece that isn't seamed together where you already get that done, but Usually in a kitchen, if you have a seam, it's it's not the whole kitchen. So get everything else done, deliver it, and then do your top coat and tell them to wait a couple days, and you're good. But there's a lot of jobs that, for granted, we would have to seam them because it was too heavy. Mm -hmm. But with this process, they're much lighter. Mitch and I can bring in a run that's 200 and... 20 inches long as long as it'll get through the doorway and, and, and install it because it's not heavy like granite. 
That's why people use it in their RVs, boats, airplanes, um, things like that. Installing heavy granite blew out my hip over the years. Yeah, me too. Bad deal. Yep. Mitch and I installed granite for years. And I'm telling you right now, this, this color that Luke is showing you, yeah. if this was granite, this would be 120 bucks a square foot. Easy. That's not counting the edge detail. I'm not kidding. I'm not embellishing that yeah. price. In Grants Pass, Oregon, this look in natural stone would be a. We did a project at a place called Fire Mountain Gems. Yeah. It's a company that um, sells beads here locally. They jewelry employ a lot of people. Jewelry, beads, um, different like like little earring pieces and parts and stuff like that. Well. They love um, like natural stone, fire mountain gems. It's like to mimic gems and, and things like that. Well, they hired us to take this slab of granite that was a full slab and we, we just cut an edge on it and polished an edge so that it was like a painting. But the, the piece weighed like 1,500 pounds. Yeah. We had to do welded brackets into the wall yeah. and, and we, we slid it in those brackets vertically. I don't know how we ever did that. That's probably why we limp. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, this piece of granite cost eight grand. I think it was more, but it was insane. Over eight grand for one piece of granite, but it was the most beautiful. It was blue. It had yeah. a lot of blues in it. it and so cool. very rare, you know, you can do a cooler look than that as a giant piece that looks like stone. Dude, we need to go in there, get B-roll of it and make it out of epoxy. Do you guys want to see that? I do. I do too, man. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go into Fire Mountain Gems. We have to be incognito because if they yes. see us do that, no, they might be cool with it because they're all about like the DIY jewelry. Yeah. Plus, we just said their business name. We hooked right. them up. We could collab with them. You know, you you know, the owners. We actually did the granite in their house. Home, right? That was huge. Dang, that was another nightmare memory. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do granite. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. Cool. Man, I have fun. You know, I got to tell you, a lot of our a lot of our recent videos, um, the production value of what Luke and Chris and Doc and Mitch are doing um, in, in these videos, we've worked very very hard to bring you the best videos on YouTube that are around resin. So I hope that you're you're seeing that. But I I forgot how much I love doing this live. Um, I, I forgot how much. Um, you know, a lot of our video content, we gear it towards the first time user. So we try not to make it too um, overwhelming as far as the, you know, the techniques that you need to do or how scary it is or complex. It, we try to do things that, that are real repeatable like this. Like, check this out. You can see like Carrera marble right here. You can see like soapstone. Like next to that one is Black Galaxy. All of these are, are really, really easy to do. Um, but golly, man. I hope that you see how passionate we are about these kind of pieces. That this wasn't uh, hard, but it was a lot harder than that. And so, if you like, if you like seeing this level of stuff, we're going to do it live. It's going to go live on our training section on our website. Guys, visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Go ahead and press the like button to thank Mitch for getting your questions. To thank Chris, who's behind there uh, running this thing. I don't know what exactly he does but I don't know how to turn on a computer too much, so he's really good at getting this to work. Uh, Luke is holding like, I gotta tell you a story about Luke, and Luke's like, bro, bro just end it. <laughs> Luke holds this gimbal, like this thing, I can't record it because it's, it's holding the camera, but he's got this gimbal, and he holds it, he's right now holding it with one hand, and this thing weighs like, like I want you to take a 10 pound weight and like hold it out like this, but this setup isn't light. I think it's more than 10. You think it's more than 10 pounds? Mm -hmm. And and Luke, man, Luke looks like uh, he looks like an outside linebacker. Like he's pretty well built, but damn, this thing's heavy. And and he and he does he doesn't complain. He 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 holds this thing for hours while I try to figure out what kind of video I'm doing and has patience with me. And and Chris and I before this thing, we were setting up something. And I was taping something to the gimbal, and I started complaining after like 30 seconds. I was like, bro, this is heavy. And Luke's like, yeah, bro. You're welcome. So you you owe him a like, all right? Don't like me, like Luke, okay? Uh, Thanks, Mike. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, guys, thank you so much for your support. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. The shirt is for a reason. That's the website. Visit us there. And Chris, are you queued up with epoxy your brain? Uh, by yeah. the way, 
tons of people were asking, where can I find a Stone Coat shirt? We need Stone Coat shirts back. No, they're on, they're on the website. Are they? Yeah. Products and supplies? Tools and supplies? Yeah. They are, dude. Are they on there, Chris? I'm searching them now. Do we have shirts on our website? I want to know. I'm betting yes. What do you guys think? Chris, come on, man. We don't. Yes, we do. I made the link. Because we quit buying them from Custom Inc. Yeah. And somebody else. Uh, we went YouTube. To YouTube. Yeah. You, no, no, no. We didn't cut that off. We have a link on our website to those. Ooh. We just didn't want to like put the link on all our YouTube videos because we're not in the business of selling t-shirts. But if you send us a picture of you wearing a Stone Coat shirt next to a cool project, maybe we should start doing something for that. We have the You Got This Award. Let me show you that. Come on, Chris. Can you find it on Tools and Supplies? It was on our last website. So we need to bring it because we got the... So yeah, we'll, we'll set that up. Here's the, you, here's the You Got This Award. Okay. This is for the coolest pictures and projects that people can make because at Stone Cold Countertops, you got this. So if you want to win the award, send us some pictures with the shirt, and we're going to make it worth your while. Guys, until next time, you got this. We'll see you on the next video. Woo! We don't have shirts. <laughs>